another thrift shop find here. Uh, some people might recognize the case. It's a Bernina. And if we take a look, what we've got, Molly, come on. The joys of recording with a cat around. Come on, look. We have a banana 1030. Uh, so today I'm, I'm going to do a uh, reasonably quick video, just a, a quick look at this machine, an overview if you like. Just go through some of the features of the machine quickly. I'll be doing a basics video on this machine soon, so keep an eye out for that one. So this is a uh, thrift shop find, and I've given the machine a service, so it's all in good condition, ready to go there cleaned it up best I can, it's in pretty good condition. The accessory, accessory tray here is a little bit yellowed. And you can see there the little end, the end plate, there, the plastic end plate's a little yellowed as well. That's just from um, sitting in the sun. Just give you a quick look at the, uh, the lid here, it's a good hard plastic lid and it just uh, sits over the top of the machine and there's a little, um, if you push the push this lever or push this big button here that releases this hinged piece here where the foot controller lives and normally there'd be a flatbed but there's no flatbed attachment or extension attachment with this machine uh, there is a foot lifter bar there so quite convenient storage there That's the knee lever lift bar, so press a foot lifter. I gave the case uh, a bit of a clean up, it needs a little bit more work. The thing with these cases is they're, they're slightly textured so um, you know they're a little bit more difficult to clean but you need a scrubbing brush really to, to um, give that a really good clean foot controller there could do with a little bit of a clean up but um, I'll do that later on so we'll have a quick look around the machine itself on the end here we've got the power cable so that is a retractable power cable pulls right out and then when you want to retract the cable there's a button on the back here just down here spring load loaded cable retraction there so that's quite handy this is the plug here for the foot controller and we've got a on off switch so we've got uh, off we've got uh, full speed so number one there and up here we've got half that's half speed so um, and going to one here or half turns the turns the built-in light on as well. Got the uh, hand wheel here. So on the back here we've got these uh, thread posts here. They're retractable just for when the when the lid's put on they retract down and spring loaded back up there. And we've got an on off switch here for the light. Press a foot lifter back there. The accessory tray there. Uh, unclips so pulls away from the machine and leaves you with the free arm here and I don't have all the accessories with this one it's got a few feet there a darning hoop quilting guide there blind hemming foot I think that is Faggoting for faggoting. I'm not sure that exactly what that. Yeah, uh, and an overlocking type foot there, and the little uh, screwdriver for the needle clamp screwdriver. So not all the attachments are there, but unfortunately it's missing the buttonhole foot. But I'm going to have a look into uh, whether I can, you know, install a. A cheaper option 
um, buttonhole foot because the ones from Bonina are very expensive so I'm going to look into options there. We've got the thread cutter here so you can bring your thread up and trim trim the threads off there and it retains the threads up there so you don't have to hold the thread while you're starting your seam. So if we have a look on the uh, the front here and the, well the top here, got the bobbin winder, engager there, got our stitch selector so there's quite a number of different stitches. Yeah quite a few stitches here so the green side is the standard uh, you know, well your forward stitches really and the red side over here is your stretch stitching so two stitches forward one stitch back type scenario so the green we've got your straight and zigzag you've got a a tricot stitch there blind hemming a couple of other utility stitches applique yeah that's more like a wavy type tricot and a couple of other um, satin stitching patterns there and over on the red side there we've got your uh, straight and zigzag stretch stitching another stretch stitch there and the likes of uh, like a blanket stitch overlocking stitch and some other sort of uh, fancy stitches up there so that's just selectable there by this lever here the buttonhole indicator there and on the top here we've also got your top tension dial here bobbin winder tensioner here and some of the controls we've got uh, zigzag width so zero is straight number four or five sorry is widest zigzag and you've got everywhere in between there as well and this uh, lever here or this knob here does your needle positioning right left and in between left and middle middle and in between right and middle. Down here we've got the six step buttonhole, like so. Stitch length here. You've got your reversing here if you flick the lever up for reverse um, and you can adjust the stitch length here with this knob here. And this switch down here uh, changes between the green and the red that we saw up here earlier for the stretch stitches and the plain stitches here that switch there and then we've got a drop feed down here for darning and free motion sewing in the front here we've got a uh, bobbin here and behind the door the bobbin cover just flips out and then you can access your bobbin from there your bobbin case and if you want to do some maintenance you can uh, easily you know get a drop of oil in, into the hook race down in here which is quite handy and you can also flip out the whole hook itself nice and easily like that you can take your throat plate off just like that and also here you've got the convenient Benina system of uh, interchangeable press feet you can just drop those off like that so as far as basic maintenance goes, um, you know this is quite handy. You can get the likes of a little cleaning brush, get in here where the lint builds up, you know, around the feed dogs here. Give that a wee clean, get in there, get oil in here nice and easily. And it's just simple to, you know, get everything back in order there. Like that. That back on nice and easy this lever here this is for a system where you can switch this over to do a basting stitch so it actually disengages the needle bar every say half dozen stitches it will engage the needle bar and do a, a tacking stitch and then feed maybe another six stitches I'll have to count it when I uh, go and do that uh, how many stitches it actually does uh, miss but the needle bar only goes down and uh, you know does a tacking stitch every say half dozen stitches it might be more than that might be less I'm not sure uh, but that what that does is creates a very long stitch and that's very good for basting and uh, tacking and things like that and on here we've got a little uh, display here which gives you more information on what's required to achieve each 
uh, you know this the parameters really for each stitch so if we're in the green here we're on uh, zigzag here straight or zigzag this gives us a bit more information here so foot number zero the width zero between zero and three stitch length is, is suggested at two and one half and needle I'm not quite sure exactly what that symbol is referring to single needle maybe yeah and that, that's just a guideline really I mean you could you could, there's no reason why you can't set the zigzag width to to five you know I see no reason why not they, these are just a suggestion for um, like default type settings if you were doing the uh, stretch function here with the in this mode it's suggesting foot number one the width of zero to five a stitch length of three and I think single needle. I'll need to refer to the manual for that. I'm not just not quite sure what they mean. Nice little machine. I'll um, plug it in and we'll just have a wee listen. I'm not going to go uh, through you know threading or you know basics or anything like that today. I'm just giving a quick overview. Okay, I've just plugged plugged the power in, attached the foot controller there. If we turn the machine to the full speed. I'm not going to attach any of the press of feet or install a needle or anything like that. We're just having a wee listen to um, this beautiful machine. They, these are beautifully made. I mean, uh, Swiss made. I think probably these are like the pinnacle of Benina quality, really. The, the series of machines. Uh, this is the 1030. There's a 1010. There's a 1000. The 1130, 1230. That kind of machine that uses this um, chassis as such and then they just pack into the chassis uh, what's required for each different model and I think they used this chassis for quite some time so you know really solid really robust just beautifully made can't get better quality really um, the only thing that would really compare in quality I would say would be the the owners and um, you know, some of the, maybe some of the Husqvarna's and Fats and things like that. This era, um, but can't go past these for quality. Let's have a wee listen. Quite nice, it's very nice. And the nice thing about this model is, no matter where you stop, this take-up lever. It is always stops at the top of its travel and it's very quick very quick acceleration and very quick deceleration but that's what I really like about these machines I'm not not a huge fan of automatic needle positioning uh, you know for a beginner because I just think to when you're learning to sew that you should know how to manually um, position the take-up lever, you know, for the end of a seam or the start of a new seam. It should always be in the up position there. Uh, I just think it's good for a beginner to know how to manually do that. It's a little bit, um, whereas this this does it all for you. And maybe um, you know, as a beginner, they they won't realise that it's doing this for them. And and when they go and maybe try and use a machine that doesn't have the automatic positioning. Uh, they might struggle because the if they start a seam with the take up lever down here uh, the first thing that's going to happen is the take up lever is going to rise up and pull the thread straight out of the eye of the needle so you know it's 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 a handy thing to know um, that this take up lever should be at the top so the default position when you stop is that the take up lever rests at the top here and if you want to um, have the needle in the down position when you stop, uh, you manually do that by back pedaling on the um, presser foot here. So I'm pushing on the back of the press foot and needle comes down into the down position. And you press again on the back and it'll go to the up. One more, down. So you can toggle between the down and the up position just by pushing on the back of the foot controller there. Very handy. You know, you can see that's, that's a very nice, uh, smooth, quiet,
quiet machine. A little bit of vibration there, but I mean, it, it's, it's running quite fast for a domestic machine. Anyway, it's, it's pretty quick. The bobbin winder here it has an independent motor, so this uh, the bobbin winder is independent of the drive system of the machine. It has its own motor here, so when you engage, the bobbin winder motor kicks in and will automatically stop when the bobbin's full. In a nutshell, that that's pretty much you know what this uh, machine is all about. Yeah, so um, that's just a quick look at the. Banana 1030, very nice machine as I say, uh, keep an eye out for a basics video on this one. So I hope you enjoyed that quick look at the Banana 1030, made in Switzerland, can't go wrong. And um, yeah, thank you very much for watching.